Happy Stream Day to those who celebrate. Good morning and welcome to the party, pal. Your friend neighborhood, Master Cass here. I hope you're well. Ghostface is here as my co-host today. He hopes you're well too. Or he's going to gut you like a fish. Today, we're doing a lot, like always here. This is the ultimate movie fans variety show. We're going to be covering a couple of unfortunate passings. We've lost a couple of celebrities. We'll talk about that. We have a celebrity celebrating a, a birthday, her 65th birthday, to be exact. We're talking about Jenna Ortega's new role, and it doesn't include Ghostface, uh, by the way, uh, as well as... My review of Scream 6. Now, going in, let me tell you right now, no spoilers. I'm not going to say anything. But uh, before I get to the review, just know if you've never seen a Scream movie, don't watch this one because it gives away all the killers and the rest of the franchise. You go to see this one, the entire franchise is ruined for you. So please don't do that to yourself. Watch the other movies. They're worth your time. Um, just a heads up on that. There's one moment in particular, like, holy shit. Kind of just, I mean, the third one does that. The fourth one stays away from it. The fifth one stays away from it. But this one really, like, spoils the entire franchise. So if you if you don't know who the killers are, then just avoid that in general. But yes, Scream 6 review. We're going to be taking a look at some physical media releases, including the amazing, the massive Pasolini box set from Criterion. Uh, as well as an arrow sale that is happening right now and is going to be done in a matter of days. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to tell you all that and more on today's show. I love movies. Ooh, I love movies. You love movies and my coffee's way too hot. Trachea burn. Oh my God. That hurt. Uh, before we get to the news items, I'm going to check in with the chat, but I want to put this on your radar uh, because I don't want you to miss it. I want you guys to be there. You've asked and asked and asked, hey, when is BC coming back? Well, uh, I've got some good news. BC is back on the channel. He'll be here Sunday for my... Uh, I have I have five panel shows, which I love doing, but it's actually my favorite thing to do. This and the panel shows. Um, anyway, I got, I got a fifth one, BC and TC, the chaos family reunites this Sunday for three men and a little movie. Uh, we were going to do roadhouse. We've decided because scream six is, is new and out this weekend and we're all going to watch it. Uh, and we're all curious what, what, what each other thinks we're going to talk about it live. We'll have a spoiler, uh, section towards the end. The first half will be non-spoilers. Second half will be spoilers. Don't worry, I'll have it timestamped if you watch on replay. But join us Sunday night, uh, the 12th. Yeah, the, the 12th of March for Three Men and a Little Movie, Episode 1, Discussing Scream 6. And, and I'll go into spoiler details there, but not here, I promise you. Fat 78 says Stone Cold. Oh, hell yeah. That's right, Stone Cold. We'll talk about that in a moment. INR, hey uh, to you. Paul Medina, what is up, my man? Friday is going pretty well so far. I got to tell you, I'm pretty well. I have a lot to say about Scream 6. I'm kind of holding it in, so stay tuned. I have a lot uh, to talk about there. Stuff that may actually change your opinion uh, before going into the movie. Like I said, I'm not, I won't spoil anything specifically, but I had a, a very interesting reaction to this movie, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, but first... Let's do, uh, let's do uh, kind of, I think, what I'm liking to put at the top of the show. And that's Buzz Around the Town. All right, let's do it. Buzz Around the Town. What's happening, Crappinin? Well, first, some good news. I guess for Sharon Stone, not really for us, but it's good. She's great. Sharon Stone turned 65 today. Happy birthday, Sharon Stone. Still looking pretty good. I think she's still an attractive, uh, attractive lady there, young lady there. Uh, of course, Shannon Stone, famous for Basic Instinct, among other roles. Uh, she is, uh, is that a picture of her? Look at that. That's Sharon Stone as a little baby. I don't know what age that is, but Adorans. Oh, uh, a fourth, a fourth? I don't know what that is. But anyway, that's, um, oh, I see some people commenting on her picture. Anyway, yeah, that's young Sharon Stone. 
pre uh pre vagina display on <laughs> basic instinct happy birthday to sharon stone uh we here at coffee with chaos center our best birthday wishes and i'm sure you all do as well stan and son says sharon stone is awesome she is she is indeed Cass, yep another rainy weekend I, I, yeah, I'm glad I'm out of the office, honestly, because the rain would have hit the, the roof and it just been loud. So it's, in a way, it's nicer to be here sitting in bed with you. Uh, <laughs> in a web kaiju, what is up, my man? Hello, hello, hello. All right, let us move on. Some sad news. This happened a while back and I wanted to cover it as soon as possible. Um, and well, now's the time. I, I wanted to sort of, let me silence my phone here. So that we don't get any beeps in my ear anyway. I don't think you hear that. But anyway, sad news in the world of uh, sci-fi and fantasy fiction. Bert I. Gordon, cult filmmaker behind Food of the Gods, Empire of the Ants, and other... I mean, he's known as Mr. Big, B-I-G, for the, the, the giant monster movies he made. He's amazing. I met him years and years and years ago at a convention... Um, film was it film facts film acts something like that it's a long time ago but i got to meet him again i have his autograph somewhere on these walls and yeah he's a wonderful guy uh he was a hundred mr big lived to be a hundred well my friend congratulations on that you will be missed bird eye gordon an american filmmaker whose low budget creature features brought supersized monsters to drive in cinemas in the mid 20th century died wednesday after collapsing, I think he, he it died like literally right after our show ended. That's when I found out. Uh, after collapsing at his home in Beverly Hills. He was 100. A little bit about him, and then we'll move on. In Atomic Age America, Gordon's science fiction B-movies manifested the country's nuclear anxieties as eye-popping apocalypse. Goals, mostly working under shooting schedules that could total to two weeks and change uh, at most. And that's... Fast, uh, but not as fast as the shit that I'm shooting now. Gordon produced, directed, and wrote more than 25 features over a career spanning six decades. Of course, he shoots film, and that takes more time, but besides the point. Including uh, striking titles like Village of the Giants, a classic. How to Succeed with Sex, which I haven't seen. I don't think that has giants in it. Empire of the Ants, uh, which is a classic. Uh, his films Necromancy and Fruit of the Gods featured Orson Welles and Ida Lupino, respectively. Um, he, uh, gosh, did he also do, oh my god, maybe I'm, no, because that's what he did, Red Planet Mars, I'm pretty sure that's him. Um, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else, but anyway, Bert, uh, Bert I. Gordon, you will be missed, take care of yourself, my friend, I guess take care of yourself in heaven, I don't know, I don't know where you go, I'm, I'm, we're not gonna pick sides here, but you'll be missed, thank you for everything you have done. Einar says, damn, just pulled Fruit of the Gods off the shelf for a rewatch. Now I kind of have to do it. Absolutely. If you guys haven't watched Fruit of the Gods, it's a fun little movie. Empire of the Ants, I think, is really, really great. So either or, you're going to have a good time. Planet Mondo, what's up? What's uh, uh, Lots is going on. We're covering quite a bit today, as always. Happy to have you here, Mondo. Happy to have you here. Now, in another bit of sad news... This one just happened, I think, or yesterday, like late yesterday. For, uh, for um, fans of true crime and fans of David Lynch, Robert Blake has died. The actor uh, from Beretta and In Cold Blood, but which, by the way, is on, on Blu-ray through Criterion. It's fantastic. Do recommend In Cold Blood. Of course, Lost Highway, he's the creepy white face guy who films... Uh, uh, <laughs> films, uh, films uh, Bill Pullman sleeping. Robert Blake, the controversial actor who won the lead actor Emmy for Beretta and starred in films including In Cold Blood and Lost Highway before a murder trial ended his career, died today of heart disease in Los Angeles. He was 89. His niece, Noreen Austin, confirmed the news. Blake's long career ranged from a childhood stint in Our Gang at age 5? Oh my god, I did not. Holy shit. He was a little rascal. That's fucking crazy. I had not heard that. That's insane to me. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Um, wow, uh, that's kind of crazy. Anyway, um, uh, he was acquitted of in the 2001 death of his wife, Bonnie Lee Backley. Um, 
I actually didn't know that. I, I wasn't really following the case. I knew there was a murder trial, but I actually didn't know that he was acquitted. I, I actually thought he went to jail, but I'm not following it too closely, so don't um, don't take any stock in what I say about all that because I'm not sure about all those details. Um, I won't go into details uh, of his career, though. I think people know him enough. Um, oh, here we go. Well, a little bit of a little bit of the the murder story. That's interesting. There's also a darker side to Blake's story. Uh, Bagley, Blake's second wife, was found shot to death outside of Vitell's restaurant in the San Fernando Valley in 2001 after the couple had di dined there. Blake told police that he had gone back into the restaurant to retrieve a handgun he'd left on the floor of their booth. What What the hell? That's, that's his alibi? Oh, I no, I didn't shoot her. I was going to go get another gun. That's weird. I'm not going to, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to talk shit because i don't know but that's odd blake was charged with backley's murder in 2002 along with solicitation of murder conspiracy and special circumstances of lying in wait but a jury found him not guilty of the crimes in 2005 after a widely watched three-month trial saw blake weep into the shoulder of his lawyer after the jury acquitted him the seven men and five women found him not guilty of soliciting a former stunt double whom he met on the bread set to kill his wife that's interesting and though Bagley's children won a wrongful death suit at Blake shortly thereafter, he, her killing officially remains unsolved. Um, that definitely derailed uh, his career. So, you know, whether or not it happened, I, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but Robert Blake has passed away and he left behind a legacy of, of amazing performances. And I hope he, I hope he rests in peace. At the end of the day, it's really all... <sighs> All that matters. Moment of silence for Robert Blake and Bert I. Gordon, please. Gentlemen, rest in peace. Now, before I get to the review, again, I'm going to save that for the end because I, I have a lot to say and I think that's... Um, I want to build up to it. This is the, That'll be the finale. Um, but I do want to address something up top here when it comes to Scream 6. It slays... 5.7 million in previews. That's a pretty big deal. That's a pretty big deal. 5.7 million in just the Thursday night openings. I saw it twice yesterday, by the way. I wasn't able to make the fan event. By the way, if anybody went to the fan event, let me know what happened. Leave a comment down below, or if you're watching live, let me know what happened in the fan event, because I I missed out. I didn't get the damn poster. I got the cup, though. Look at that. AMC, baby. Get your cup now. Um... Uh, I missed out on the poster and stuff like that. So I don't know what the fan event actually had. Did it have like a behind the scenes or something? I'm curious. I'm bummed, but you have to make sacrifices when you're, you know, running a family, essentially. It's tough. But uh, I still got to see the movie twice, so I cannot complain. The Paramount Spyglass media release of Scream 6 is off to a loud start with 5.7 million in Thursday previews from its 5 p.m. fan event and 5.30 p.m. previews at uh, over 3,000 theaters. It's expected that the sixth, sixth quo, that's a weird word, is headed to a franchise record domestic start of 35 to 40 this weekend. The latest scream from Radio Science is also expected to notch 50 million global. And we'll talk about it on Monday on uh, the Monday episode of Coffee with Chaos. So I hope you'll join us for that one. Um, it doesn't say it here. Maybe it does. Da, 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 da. It doesn't say it here, but they said that uh, Scream uh, uh, 2022, Scream 5, made 3.3 in its uh, debut. Um, its preview screenings on Thursdays, on the Thursday screenings. So that's a, a marked improvement on that. And I have a feeling the movie is going to have legs. So we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, uh, Interweb Kaiju, I saw it both flat and in 3D, and I'll and I'll uh, talk about all the 3D whether it's worth it or not um, towards the end. So stay tuned. Cast catching scream in 3D tonight. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Einer says unfair. You saw it twice and I couldn't see it once because of recent eye surgery. Oh, that sucks, man. I'm sorry to hear that. I, I, I wish you a speedy recovery. Punk Ron, happy Friday to you, my friend. So stay tuned 
because uh, Scream 6 looks like it might be one of the more successful ones at the box office, which I guess isn't surprising because I know uh, even though the fifth one was sort of in contention um, with a lot of fans, myself included, um, I, I think there's enough carryover from the Wednesday fans that it, it, at least opening weekend will be front loaded, especially with 3D screenings and things like that. Okay, are you ready for the final piece of Buzz Around Town? This is some what the fuckery right here. Actually, no, not the final piece, but the final piece for the moment. This is some what the fuckery right here. And this is true. 100% true. Not a lie. Not a lie. This is 100% true. Bob Odenkirk to star in the Room remake for charity. I tried my best to sell every line. I'm going to read that again. Bob Odenkirk, better call Saul, to star in... The Room Remake. You know when they say Hollywood's run out of ideas? This might be the most brilliant thing I've ever heard. Um, well, it would have been great like if Tom Cruise... Oh my god. I can't even imagine. I can't even... Uh, I can't even imagine. I can Oh my god. Okay. This is crazy. All right. Okay, so hold on to your butts for this one. Oh, hi, Bob. Better Call Saul's Bob Odenkirk will star in a video recreation of The Room, one of cinema's strangest films. Some worse. Others know Others know the naysayers just don't get it. Uh, performed against a green screen that displays locations used in the original movie, The Room remake is the latest endeavor from Acting for a Cause, an all-volunteer organization that produces and stages Zoom-style table readings of classic plays and movies for charity. Produced, directed, and hosted by the organization's Brando Crawford. Um, the name sounds familiar, but I can't place it. The Room will benefit Amphar. I have no idea what that is, but it, uh, I guess it's a charity. This is real. Odegrick <laughs> tweeted last night. This is true. And let me tell you, I tried my best to sell every line as honestly as I could, and I had a blast. Typically, the acting for a cause productions are announced just days before they appear on the group's website. The pre-show information dripped out on its Instagram page. Judging by photos posted on Instagram, the room project is a step beyond the usual Zoom readings, with the cast actually performing in front of the green screen. Odenkirk all but confirmed his involvement earlier this week by retweeting a tweet from our uh, a friend of the show here, podcaster Justin DeClue, that revealed some details of the project. Uh, who runs Gold Ninja Video. Specifically, Odin Kirk's casting as Tommy Wiseau. Uh, actor and actress Cameron Kasky has also tweeted behind-the-scenes images and said on Reddit that Crawford and pieces of her actor Bella Heathcote will appear in the Tribute remake. Um, so it doesn't... The one thing it doesn't say is when it's coming out. So I will keep you posted. There's our, there's our buddy Justin. Go follow him on Twitter. Um... It doesn't say when it's coming out. At, at least I couldn't find it anywhere listed. So uh, it, it'll be out eventually. Once it's out, I'll let you guys know. But holy crap, tell me, tell me right now that that does not blow your mind. Because to me, I can't even imagine um, what that experience would be um, uh, cinematically. I, I, honestly, is he gonna do? Is he gonna do a joke? Is he gonna, you know, is he is he gonna play it straight, or is he gonna try to do a Tommy Wiseau, or is he gonna play it like, you know, Better Call Saul? Like, I, I, I'm so curious. I'm so curious. It's insane to me. I, 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 I'm so, so curious. Casey says, "I love the room and the disaster artist. Looking forward to the room with Odenkirk. That's it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. How crazy is that shit?" Ryan McCormick says, The fan of it included the cast playing a game called What's in the Body Bag. There was a Reno 911 skit. Oh, fuck. I wanted to see that. I got to find that online. And a Demi Lovato music video. Also, Sam and Gail welcoming us to the film before it started. See, I saw that. Op I saw the welcoming for the 3D when I saw it in 3D, but now when I saw it flat. Um, damn. I wanted to see that skit. Fuck. All right. Well, I'll, I'll find it. I'm sure it's available somewhere. Punk Run says, I heard about this yesterday and thought it was a joke. No joke. It happening. Joe Jack says, oh my god. Uh, Odenkirk is Tommy Wiseau. It's crazy, right? Crazy. In insane. Um, uh, uh, ben says, still waiting for his shark movie. Did Tommy make a shark movie? I hadn't heard that. That's kind of insane. 
uh, 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 Zach, what is up? Just jumped in during work, uh, sadly. Loving the new show and news format and can't wait for the Triple Chaos show. Thanks, Master. Thank you. You know, I just heard from, from a subscriber who said he doesn't like the new content. That's fine. It's not going to be for everybody, you know. Um, we're so literally within striking distance of... We got the 1500 and then somebody unsubscribed and now we're not at 1500 anymore. So it's just one of those things where it's like, ah, it's frustrating. Like, we're just there. We're just there. But it's cool. People don't like the content. I get it. There's a lot of stuff on here. You don't have to hang out. That's fine. Hopefully we'll win you back. But Zach, I'm glad you're enjoying this very, very much. Uh, Joe, I agree. Odin Kirk is a great. Uh, him and David Cross are amazing, amazing Mr. Show. That's my. I don't like the new season on Netflix, but all the old stuff is so fucking good. So good. Einar says, I've experienced the room once, and that was certainly something. But in no way in hell... Putting myself to something like that again. Wow. You gotta watch our show Voyage to the Bottom of the Barrel where we review some shit-ass movies. You think the room is bad? Boy, you ain't seen nothing yet. Man, that ain't nothing. That's a, that, that's a masterpiece compared to the shit that we watch. Casey says he was teasing Big Shark years ago, and as far as I know, nothing new. I, I, I hadn't heard that. I, I don't know if he... I, I don't even think it's happening, man. Honestly, I don't think... I, I, I Honestly, I think... The success of the room sort of sideswiped him because it's it's successful because it sucks. So I I don't I don't know if he's got any juice in the tank. I really wish he did. I really wish he was like Neil Breen. Neil Breen doesn't give a shit. Neil Breen keeps churning out garbage. My God, Sunset Shimmer. Don't worry, you're you're late you're late to the party, but we saved you some booze and it comes in this cool cup. So yeah, like I said, AMC, these are gonna sell out. So get them now, if you're going. They're not going to last very long. They said collect all three, but I only saw this design, so maybe there's going to be more designs coming. I don't know, but I got it. I'm happy with this. All right. Your last piece of Buzz Around the Town is going to blow your organs through your Nikes or whatever shoe you choose to wear. Jenna Ortega circling Beetlejuice 2. This girl, is gonna is, she's going to be the new goth icon. It's insane. Uh, the role would reunite the Wednesday star with the world of Tim Burton. Of course, Tim Burton directed, I think, the first two or three episodes of uh, Wednesday. So maybe that's how she got the nod. Wednesday star Jenna Ortega is looking to star in the Tim Burton family. Looking to stay, sorry, in the Tim Burton family. The actor is circling a role in Beetlejuice 2, multiple sources tell the reporter. Uh, Warner Brothers, which is behind the feature, was not available to comment. A representative for Ortega did not respond to requests. The news comes as Ortega hits theaters with Scream 6, which could land the top opening in the franchise's 25-plus year history. Probably will. Uh, Tim Burton, who helmed the 1988 film starring Michael Keaton, is expected to direct, with Keaton returning as well, according to sources. Production is eyeing, and that's, I think, uh, that's right? I think that's missing something. But anyway... Uh, a late May or early June shoot in London, but budget has not been set, resulting in a back and forth. If a deal is made, sources say Ortega would play the daughter of Lydia, the character played by Winona Ryder in the original. So I'm guessing she marries a Latino. She has to marry a Latino, man. You have to do it. I can do that because I, I, I'm I'm Latino, so I can do that. I'm, I'm not making fun of race, race, racism or whatever. I can I can get away with it. Anyway, uh, Alec Baldwin, Gina Davis, Jeffrey Jones, Catherine O'Hara also starred in the original film. Who knows if they'll return? I doubt Alec Baldwin's coming back. I'll be very shocked. But who knows? Stranger things have happened. Hey, did you hear about Bob Odenkirk playing Tommy Wiseau? Like I said, stranger things have happened. So uh, nothing is set in stone. But if the Hollywood Reporter is talking about it, then it's most likely a done deal. Pretty insane stuff uh pretty exciting stuff honestly if you ask me um i think she'd fit i think she'd fit right in i think she's perfect absolutely perfect and um it's almost a no-brainer einar says does beetlejuice really need a sequel it's a good question i guess it's how good the movie is i guess it depends on how good the movie is at the end of the day nathan says got my coffee and ready for the scream six lowdown okay stay tuned I'm going to give you guys, I, I honestly think it's probably going to be a very shocking review from me, but stay tuned. Stay tuned. I hope Catherine O'Hara returns. She 
Well, guess she would be grandma. I absolutely she should. Absolutely she should. Nathan says, yes, love Jenna and Beetlejuice. There's no way Alec is coming back. Yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Corruptive Chaos, what is up? Another Chaos. What's up, man? K uh, Jenna Ortega is the best of the new Screamcast. Wholeheartedly uh, agree with you there. Okay, guys, get yourselves ready. Bend over. It's time for a physical exam. This is where I tell you all about the physical media coming into your life or onto your shelves in the coming months. Uh, I guess months because a lot of this is sort of in advance as they like to do. Uh, right here, uh, we're going to start with Radiance Films May announcements. This is from their Twitter post, and um, this is the, the bundle, but this is this is what they're going to be releasing. You can buy these individually. I believe Amazon already has them up for pre-order, as well as Diabolic, which we'll talk about Diabolic in a moment. Um, but the one that really jumps out to me, like, bam, baby, gotta get it, is Cosa Nostra, the three mafia tales by Damiano. He's a great director. Um, and they all star, as far as I as far I might be incorrect, but as far as I know, they're all starring Frank Gonero, who is a badass in, in, in cinema, not just uh, in world cinema, not just Italian, but world cinema. Frank Gonero, man, bad at right, he's right there, Franco, right there. Um, I'm getting the shit out of that. Cosa Nostra, the three mafia tales. So it's a three film box set, it's a pretty snazzy looking box set. Then you get something called Red Sun, which unfortunately is not the one I wanted. The Red Sun I wanted is the one with Bronson, Alain Delon, uh, Ursula Andress, uh, Toshiro Mifune. I want that movie so bad. Why can't that movie come out? Jesus, man. Put that shit on 4K. Oh, my God. That is the best spaghetti western. Well, not the best spaghetti western, but it's a fun-ass spaghetti western. So great. Mwah. I want that movie so bad. I don't know this one. I'm not familiar with this Red Sun, but hey, they're putting it out. Uh, they're also putting out the hotspot, which uh, this is, by the way, a UK. The hotspot's already on Blu-ray through Kino. Highly recommended. Really fun, sexy time movie. Jennifer Connelly, topless, fantastic. Um, Buster Keaton rides again. This was a Canadian International Pictures release through a Vinegar Center partner label. Sold out. Now the UK edition is here. I don't know if it includes the other thing. I think it's just a Buster Keaton documentary, whatever it was. Plus, you get exclusive postcards. Uh, I think the postcards are with the set and with, uh, I think the other postcards are with Red Sun. Uh, I don't think you get postcards for Hotspot or Buster Keaton. Now, there are two different bundles. You can get it without Buster Keaton or with. Uh, is anybody uh, picking up any of the Radiance titles? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments down below if you're watching on a replay. By the way, timestamps. There's something specifically you want to address. But remember, I haven't mentioned it yet. But let's do that now. Welcome to the 100 Club. Smash the thumbs up. Let's do that. Oh, I'm going to do this right now. So you can, This is a big deal. This means a lot to the video. It means a lot to the video. And most of you are doing it. And I appreciate it. But if, if more than half of you do it, this means so much to the channel. And for me to keep going, honestly, you have no idea how important this is for YouTubers. We, we ask for a reason. We ask for a reason. Join the first 100 club and then go forward. And then you can join the 200 club. But join the 100 club right now. If it's under a 100 and thumbs up, smash the thumbs up. I promise you I'm going to earn your thumb uh, in a positive way. I appreciate your support. I really do. If you're, if you're not subscribed, do subscribe to us. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers before my birthday in a month. It's a near impossibility. This is an uphill battle. But... If you ever thought of supporting the channel, subscribing for the content, do it now. Please, please. Okay, that's Radiance Films. Moving on. Joe Jack says, did anybody watch Buster Keaton Rides Again? That's a good question. I know it sold out, but I haven't heard anybody talking about it or whether it's good. So if anybody in the chat has watched it, let me know. Joe Jack says, the Cosa Nostra box will be mine. <laughs> Einar says, that Cosa Nostra set is a must. Absolutely. May to December. Good morning. I had a subscription, so I'll be getting everything they released for a good while. Nice. Wow. So you plunked down three grand. Not, it was no, it wasn't three grand. It was it was over a grand. It was like fifteen hundred for two years, three years, or something like that. It's kind of amazing. I, I hope you like what you get. I hope you like what you get. Nathan says Hotspot is great. Dennis Hopper is an underrated director. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't know if he's underrated necessarily because people love Easy Rider. 
and out of the blue. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's a very low key Den uh, Dennis Hopper movie. Um, from Virginia Madsen. Oh my god, yeah, it's a really good movie. Really, really good movie. Ozzy says, I got the U.S. subscription, so I should get some of these. Nice. Well, I hope you enjoy it. May to December says, three years for 1,600 pounds, which is what? Uh, I'm not going to do the math now, but it's, it's probably similar in U.S. dollars. That's pretty uh, pretty snazz. I hope you enjoy it. Chris, late to the party. By the way, there's a Shout Factory sale going on. Is there really? I hadn't heard that. Did that just drop? I have to look, uh, I'll, I'll look that up, actually. I'll, I'll see if, if an email came out or something. Uh, I will look that up. Thanks for the heads up on that. Uh, all right, Radiance Philbans. Thank you, Radiance. Moving on. The big announcement of the year is here. This is the one that I think uh, most people are excited about. I certainly am excited about it. Will I buy it? Mm, that's a different question nine films from pierre uh or pier i guess is how you pronounce it pier paolo pasolini the director of solo and no solo is not included in here even though the film the, the box has called pasolini 101 which i'm guessing is sort of like you know a a uh, film school in a box for lack of a better word of pasolini movies just to basically here this is all you need to know about pasolini they left out movies like Solo, which I guess they assume everybody has already. I don't. And I, I, I knowing enough about it, I'm just not interested in watching it. And because he is the director of that movie, uh, I think I'm on the fence about getting this in general. I will have the TV YB. Luckily, I've got the channel, Criterion Channel, and I love it. I really love what, what they're doing over there. One of the most original and controversial thinkers of the 20th century, Italian polymath. Wow, what a term. Uh, Pierre Paolo Pasolini embodied a multitude of often seemingly contradictory ideologies and identities, and he expressed them all in his provocative, lyrical, indelible films. Relentlessly concerned with societies downtrodden and marginalized, he elevated pimps, hustlers, sex workers, and vagabonds to the realm of saints while depicting actual saints with radical earthiness, traversing the sacred and the profane, the ancient and the modern, the mythic, and the personal, the nine uncompromising, often scandal-inciting features he made in the 1960s still stand on this, the 100 and, 101st anniversary of his birth. Okay, so there you go, 101. As a monument to his daring vision of cinema as a form of resistance. I know I said that in French because he's Italian, but whatever, go with it. You can zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see... The, uh, the writing a, a little better. Uh, Joe Jack says, I kind of never want to watch Solo again. Do you wreck his others? Like I said, I've never seen Solo and I'm not familiar with his films. I might have seen something but, and I just not remember it. If it's in here, I'll remember it. But he's definitely someone, a filmmaker I'm lacking in, in terms of content. The box set, which is uh, right now... Uh, SRP at 250, uh, and I guess on sale would be 175, something like that. Blu-ray right now, 200 dollars. Comes out June 27th. There is a sale happening July on Barnes and Noble, so you can wait for July and pick it up then. I think a lot of people might do that. There's no real hurry for these. Or I may be wrong. Somebody much needs to get it immediately. That's fine. Box set includes Akatone, poet and painter turned filmmaker Pierre Pasoli, uh, Paolo Pasolini, courted controversy with his very first feature by using Catholic iconography and liturgical music to render a plaintive, brutally, brutally beautiful portrait of a shiftless Roman pimp and thief. Then non professional Franco Citti, mm, in a revelatory performance whose life of petty crime turns increasingly desperate. When the woman he support, who supports him is imprisoned, melding a hard scrabble neorealist milieu with classical influences, Pasolini offers a vision of underclass struggle as a kind of modern sainthood. Sounds all right. Mama Roma, 1962. Anna Magna, Anna Magnani. Yeah, she uh, she's been in a ton of stuff. I can't I, I don't I can't place her right now, but I, I've heard the name. 
is Mama Roma, a middle-aged prostitute who attempts to extricate herself from her sordid past for the sake of her son. Highlighting director Pierre Paolo Pasolini's uh, lifelong fascination. I'm just going to call him PPP from, the, from now on. <laughs> PPP. Lifelong fascination with the marginalized and dispossessed. Mama Roma offers an unflinching, neorealistic look at the struggle for survival in post-war Italy. Though initially banned in the country for obscenity, today the film remains a classic featuring a powerhouse performance by one of cinema's greatest actors and offering a glimpse at Pasolini in the process of finding his style. Not familiar with that one. Love Meetings from 64. Let's talk about sex. Oh, yeah. In this radically engaged and engaging documentary, PPP takes to the streets, towns, squares, benches, oh, sorry, beaches, factories, and universities of 1960s Italy to solicit everyday citizens' thoughts on a host of hot button subjects, including sex work, gender equality, homosexuality, and divorce, then legal in Italy. Eh, all right, not that interesting to me. Uh, I don't know. I, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, according to Matthew, is one I'm familiar with, but I have not seen it. 64. A biblical epic that only the Marxist dissident PPP could make. This intensely faithful adaptation of St. Matthew's Gospel depicts the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, uh, whose unwavering compassion for the poor and defiant condemnation of moral hypocrisy makes him perhaps uh, a perhaps unexpected embodiment of the director's own worldview. Stunningly shot amid the timeless landscapes of southern Italy and set to a soundtrack that encompasses everything from Bach to black spirituals. The Gospel according to Matthew cuts past dogma and straight to the core of Jesus' radical humanism. Hmm. Moderately interested in crazy religious movies like that, but uh, not enough to buy it. The Hawks and Sparrows, 1966, while wandering the countryside, a pair of father and son of vagabonds happen upon a talking crow spouts philosophy and launches them on a free-willing picaresque through time, space, whoa, and the margins of a rapidly modernizing Italy, a comic Marxist fable that balances heady ideas about religion, poverty, and class struggle with irreverent slapstick sight gags. The Hawks and the Sparrows finds Pasolini at his lightest yet, as uh, st uh, yet as stingingly subversive as ever. Well, that sounds maniacal that sounds maniacal uh, to me joe jack says the gospel one could be good uh could be good einar says for me pasolini is so up and down some of his works are great and others are not that easy to consume robzilla says it's all european yep uh yes indeed uh, Oedipus Rex, 1967 ppp's powerful iconoclastic take on sophocles's tragedy Blends errors and cultures to create a searing exploration of fate, free will, and the things we fear most in ourselves. Shot amid the stark elemental landscapes of the Moroccan desert and set in an indefinable ancient past, this bold reimagining cast of filmmakers frequent collaborator Franco Chitti as the eponymous foundling whose willful blindness to his own nature unleashes a cataclysmic reckoning. Uh, with a prologue and epilogue set in 20th century Italy, Pasolini connects the story to his own upbringing, daring, daring to bear his soul on screen. Huh. Uh, I don't know about that. Teorama uh, is what I'm familiar with. With Teorama, a coolly cryptic exploration of bourgeois spiritual emptiness. Ugh, God, no. That already sounds bad. PPP moved beyond the poetic proletarian earthiness that first won him renown. Terrence Stamp starred as the mysterious stranger, perhaps an angel, perhaps the devil, who, one by one, seduces the members of a wealthy, Milanese family participating, uh, oh, sorry, precipitating an existential crisis in each of their lives. Well, that gosh, you're not really selling me on these. Poor seal, I killed my father, I ate human flesh, I quiver with joy. Now, thanks to that, YouTube will unmonetize this. Provocateur Pierre Paolo Pasolini is at his most incendiary in this double edged allegory on fascism consumerism and resistance in one story a defiant man perpetrates increasingly barbaric acts while wandering a mythic volcanic landscape in the other the scion of a wealthy ex-nazi industrial family conceals a shocking proclivity taken together these stories of transgression from post-war european moral rot and the meaning of rebellion in the face of a corrupt world oh sorry form a scathing 
Uh, yeah, uh, mm, oof, I don't know about this. Medea. In this hypnotic adaptation of Euripides' immor immortal tragedy, PPP casts opera diva Maria Callas as the sorceress of Greek legend whose separation uh, from her homeland of Colchis, Colchis, uh, and betrayal by her lover Jason led her down a path of shocking vengeance, melting Western myth with aesthetic and musical influences from numerous world cultures, Pasolini fashions, a mesmerizing cinematic pageant that gathers in force until it explodes in rage and a, stu and a stunningly nihilistic condemnation of injustice. Vaguely interested in that. No. Oh, here we go. Special features. Two shorts made by the director. Two documentaries made by Pasolini. So you get some extra movies there. New program on Pasolini's visual style. Audio commentaries on Akatone and uh, Teorema. Documentaries on Pasolini's life. An episode from a French program. Uh, interviews with filmmakers and scholars. That's pretty vague. Maybe it's not all filled in yet. Uh, and then deluxe packaging includes a 100-page book with essays and all that good stuff with writings and drawings by Pasolini himself. It's not a winner, winner, chicken dinner for me, uh, but I can see this being a, a good seller. And believe it or not, this is the first box set of the year from Criterion for 2023. The first box set of the year is coming in June. What the fuck? It took so long. I mean, I know these take a long to put together, but geez. Uh, let's just make it happen. Uh, let's get some shit out there. Uh, Justin, uh, it's okay that you're late. Make sure you slam the thumbs up. Remember, you got to be part of the 100 Club. My favorite people are the first 100. I love everybody else. But, uh, the first 100, you guys are really, really, really holding it down for me. And I appreciate that so much. Yeah, Criterion Flash Sale, no news yet. Well, uh, uh, hopefully next week. Hopefully next week. Joe Jack said, for a Marxist, this guy was really into religious themes. Yeah, he, he certainly, certainly loved that. Justin says, looks like Arrow's doing something with Bruce Lee. A box set, if it looks better than the Criterion, which I liked, may double dip. Oh, has that been announced? I hadn't seen that. That's pretty interesting. Thumbs up has been hit. Hell yeah. Einar, too expensive for what it is. Pasolini is more for film school and not general consumption. I don't disagree with you there. Um, we'll see how it's... I mean, I, I don't know if there's a way to keep track of it, but I, I don't know if this is going to be a hot seller, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, something that is that should have been a hot seller, but isn't. What a segue. Oh, my God. I'm getting really good at this. It's time for Death Wish. Death Watch. Death Wish 2 is still available. Now, last time we checked in, the the movie was, I think, at like 118. 118 left, the limited slipcover. Now, magically, it's up to 220. What I'm guessing happened is either, you know, resellers bought a whole bunch and those got refunded. Like, no, we're not going to sell you like 80 copies or whatever. Um, or they just found a box in the back. And they're like, oh, we got a box. Let's just uh, throw up another 100. So it's back up to two now two twenty. Will Death Wash two, Death Wash Death Wish, sell out by uh, over the weekend by the Monday episode of Coffee with Chaos? Well, I will keep an eye on what I'm calling this developing story, Death Wish, Death Watch. Let's see if we've sold any while it's been listed here. No, still two twenty. So two twenty as of Friday. We'll check in on Monday and see where it lands. I'm curious. Do you have Death Wish 2? Did you like it? Are you planning on buying it? If you do, you should probably grab it now. Just to be safe. Uh, so uh, 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 go ahead and do that. A-S-A-P. Um, alrighty. Death Wish 2. That is Death Wish Death Watch. Now let's talk about uh, a sale. That uh, is on uh, everyone's radar, or maybe not on yours. So let me put this on your radar because it's almost over. Let's go to Diabolic DVD. No, I don't want to say. I hate when that subscription thing keeps popping up. This is Arrow Video's Spring Fever Sale. It's over March 4th, uh, 14th. So you literally got ten, four days to check it out. I suggest if you want some Arrow titles and you did not, not know about this, Go check it out. Uh, go, go check it out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading something. Go check it out. 
Um, uh, Justin says, Arrow put out a teaser that something Bruce Lee is coming. Most likely it'll be 4Ks. I I'll, I'm good. I don't think I need to 4K it up. Um, I, I don't think I need to 4K it up. Uh, Blucka Blucka says, Scream 6 was doo-doo, baby. Oh, man. All right, well, let's talk about it. We'll talk about it uh, pretty soon, actually. We're, we're coming up on the review, so stay tuned. But I'm curious your thoughts. By the way, no spoilers in the comment. Uh, Joe Jack says, Hamilton Books has a good arrow sale, too. Um, Ozzy says, oh, here we go. Was going to buy from Die Black, but Hamilton has all the ones I want for it cheap. But just so you know, sometimes on Hamilton Book, they don't come with slipcovers. Almost never. So keep that in mind. If you want the slipcovers, Diabolic will have those. Uh, now the box sets will come in a box set. But for example, Flatliners, limited edition slipcover, most likely, if you don't give a shit, fine. But it's probably more expensive because of the slipcover. Uh, so if you want the slipcover, get it to Diabolic. Um, right now, I, I can 100% guarantee you will love Vengeance Trails. I'll have a review on it for this channel. Years of Lead, two of my favorite box sets of the year. 35 bucks for four, uh, eight movies all together. Yeah, 35 bucks for four movies. Good fucking deal. And they're all good goddamn movies in each box set. Absolutely great. Oh, no, sorry. It's five movies in Years of Lead. So even better deal. Get that shit. You will love it. Let me warn you away from Sacred Spirit and Righteous. Terrible. Fucking garbage. Stupid. You know, um, artsy fartsy shit. I did not like it. Uh, I do not recommend. Hell High, absolutely do recommend. Edge of Sanity, I didn't like it. I can't recommend it. Um, let's see. Everything else I think people know. Girls Night Out, I didn't love it. It's not much of a slasher movie, to be honest. I didn't love it. It, it did not connect with me. 12 Monkeys, if you haven't seen it in a while, it's really great. I think it's due for uh, a revisit. It's. I didn't like it at first, but it grew on me. I was really impressed with that movie. Anything Claude Chabrol sucks. I didn't like any of the Chabrol box sets. I reviewed all of them. Not a fan. Not a fan. To Sleep to Dream. It's not in stock, but you can still order it on Diabolic. And they'll, when they have it, they'll ship it to you. This was one of my favorite discoveries of the year. Love it, love it, love it. Such a beautiful movie. It's By the way, it's all about movies. It's all about the magic of movies and the transcend, kind of transcendent nature of cinema and, 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 and filmmaking. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I do highly recommend it. It's a great Japanese film. Cold War Creatures, highly recommend it. I really like that box set in general, but I kind of love those type of movies. Yokai Monsters, moderate recommendation. The first two movies in there are good. The rest are not great. Uh, it's it's eh, it's really more for the adventurous Japanese cinema lover. Sleep, stay away. Not a good movie. I did not like that at all. Deadly Games is okay. I thought that was that was a pretty decent little movie. I didn't hate it. I did not hate it. Red Angel is another pretty uh, interesting Japanese film. Uh, I would say, again, more adventurous. It's not gross. It's not like a torture movie or anything. It's actually about the war, but it's very sexually charged. It's a strange movie, but I, I really enjoyed the shit out of that. Uh, and I do recommend that one. And lastly, uh, I will say, Get Your Hands on My Stepmother is an alien not my real stepmother. Just my stepmother's an alien. Great movie. If you haven't watched it, it's a classic uh, 90s, I guess. 90s comedy. So wonderful. Dan Aykroyd, uh, Alison Hannigan, and of course, Kim uh, Bassinger, bass singer, however you want to say it. She's great. And it's such a wonderful god dang movie. Uh, I blind bought Phantom of the Mall and it wasn't that good. No, Phantom of the Mall sucked, man. Super disappointing. Super disappointing. Blanca, I agree. True romance is great, but I think most people know that that's a fr uh, freaking amazing movie. Uh, Ozzy says, I might go see Scream 6 tonight. I didn't hate 5, but I thought the main girl was super annoying. Blanca Blanca says, it's hard to give any decent thoughts about Scream 6 without spoilers, but I will say trailers need to die tonight. Trailers. <laughs> The trailers are misleading, but I guess that's, I mean, that is part of it, right? They're not going to give, they, 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 they want to, like, they want to trick you, but they don't trick you too bad, I think, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I, I don't think it's too tricky. Justin says, Shosko Volume 1 down to 72. Super tempting. I mean, if you're interested in it, that's probably as low as it's going to get. So grab it. Um, grab it now. 
Uh, because, yeah, why not? Paul has ordered Middle of the Stone Women. I didn't love that one. Uh, I actually have the, the DVD of it from back in the day. I forget who put it out. Mondo? Mondo put it out? I wanted to love it more. It just it didn't hit me in the right spot, unfortunately. All right, we're almost at the review, but one more piece of physical media to share with you. Peep this. Fright Rags is doing a line of specifically army of darkness merch wow what i i i think a lot of fans of the franchise consider army of darkness a classic some people may even consider it a favorite i love army of darkness so much i don't know that i'm gonna be buying any of this um but i would have back in the day um when i was you know into getting every t-shirt I, I could get that had a horror on it this is phenomenal let's look at the artwork real quick uh, fantastic. I really like this. 10% off. I really like that. That's beautiful. Was that Devin Draws? I'm not sure who did that, but that looks amazing. You get this a t shirt, and then you've got uh, this one. Let me see if I can just. Oh, yeah. That looks like an old Renaissance painting. That Astri right there. I like that quite a bit. Uh, and then the long sleeve, which looks really snaz, that has our uh, ash, uh, so sort of silhouetted, and then hail to the king on the sleeves. Almost looks like a video game cover to me, and that could be like a video game kind of thing. This is interesting. I don't know if they've done this before, but souvenir cups, seven dollar souvenir cup. I gotta say, I don't love the art style, but it does look like something you'd see at McDonald's, or you know what I mean, if you went like. When McDonald's would do the tie-ins, it does kind of feel like that. That's pretty fucking cool, actually. That's pretty dang neat. You get socks, because why not? $13 socks. Ash and Evil Ash. It's amazing. Uh, and then, of course, the hoodie. The zippered hoodie with that sort of main design. $52. Jesus. Then, of course, women's cut. And then this is pretty snazz right here. The logo hat. Oh, yeah. A little distressing pretty sweet i do like that quite a bit actually um there you go just wanted to put that on your radar that's what i do here put things on people's radar mm. all right so um fright rags that's it for physical media now it's time for reviews are you guys ready i'm ready it's movie reviews time. Oh my god. Uh, I know you've all been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. And I um, unfortunately, I'm going to um, uh, give you blue balls for a little bit longer. Because there is a movie I want to talk about first, review-wise. But it's not the one that you expected me to go with. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay, stay here. Remember, first hundred clubs. Slam that thumbs up. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's. Are you ready for this? It's gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna go like this because then it's gonna block me. Kino just announced this motherfucker right here. Stone Cold. Oh yeah, that's a big. How the hell did I get in here? Stone Cold. Look at that. Oh, here we go. How you doing? Stone Cold. Brian Bosworth. Stone Cold. Hey, do you remember Brian Bosworth? You probably don't, unless you've seen Stone Cold. And then it's left quite an impression on you. Einar says he liked the long sleeve one. Nice. Um, all right. So Stone Cold is coming from Kino. Uh, they have a, a nice little snazzy Blu-ray headed our way. So I thought, um, why not revisit Stone Cold and give my thoughts on it in case anybody's interested in pre-ordering. So allow me to do just that. Let's talk Stone Friggin' Cold. Hell yeah. From 1991, uh, this lean and mean, no-nonsense film plays like a diehard version of a biker movie. And it's a gloriously macho experience. Similar to other biker movies, a cop goes undercover with the motorcycle club run by fantastic Lance Henriksen, who honestly is always fantastic, but here shines as a scummy, muscly biker dirtbag. 
The film doesn't skimp on fantastic stunts, machine gun fire, and explosions, and Brian Bosworth walks through it all like a bull in a china shop, and it's fucking awesome. Like, awesome. This is one of those unsung and forgotten action movies from back in the day, uh, back when Arnold Schwarzenegger rules uh, were the kind of the the rules that every action movie played by. And it is a ton of fucking fun. It does borrow a bit from Die Hard in the finale, even with a Sergeant Powell twist. But personally, the ending is what makes this my favorite biker movie. Because it elevates the subgenre in my eyes. Stone Cold is a blast. It's, it, is, it is a biker movie. It is my favorite biker movie. I'm sure my buddy Bullet Blake loves this movie. I know a lot of people enjoy Stone Cold. It has it has a fond remembrance, a remembrance from people who watched it back in the day. You know, I'm pretty sure I watched this in theaters because I would watch every action movie in theaters back then. So I'm pretty sure I watched it in theaters, but I do have fond memories of renting it. It still holds up. Still a fun ass movie, and it delivers the good. Directed by Craig Baxley, who did Action Jackson, uh, I Come in Peace, and uh, Rose Red. He did a lot of Stephen King stuff, which is not great, but the action stuff is really good. He was the stunt guy for Predator, by the way. So this guy knows his shit. He knows his way around an action scene, uh, and it's a uh, and it's a fantastic, uh, fantastically juicy movie. Four stars, four stars for Stone Cold. Get it if you're ever if you're at all interested in it. Grab the Kino release. It, you're gonna have a good fucking time. It's my favorite biker movie. I wonder how Bully Blake thinks. Uh, I wonder because he's a biker in real life, so I'm wondering if he thinks it's. I don't. I don't. It's not his. I think his favorite is. Um, Beyond the Law, I think it's the, the the Charlie Sheen biker movie. But um, I, this is my favorite because I don't like biker movies, but this felt like a Die Hard movie, and I like that shit even more. So I, I'm enjoyed. I enjoy that kind of, that aspect of it a lot better. Justin, I agree. Uh, Lance steals the movie. I mean, Brian Bosworth isn't an actor; he does a good job. But I don't disagree. I, I think he certainly he, he certainly. I mean, also, uh, uh, Forsyth. Forsyth, oh my God. Uh, my God, not um, Frederick, not Frederick Forsyth. Oh my fucking God, I can't, Forsyth, what, uh, uh, my God, I'm blanking on his first name. Help me out here, Forsyth, what's his fucking name? Anyway, Forsyth is in it. Uh, he was in a lot of um, Rob Zombie stuff. He's amazing. I thought he was great in it too, uh, which is, um, uh, uh, it just adds to the bad guy caliber. I remember when that came out in, in theaters. Yeah, there you go. William, thank you. Fuck me. William Forsyth, thank you guys. He's really good in this as well. And and I like I like his his uh his chase scene is fantastic. 101 films uh had a release of Stone Cold a while, but that transfer is iffy. Yeah, I think this is a new transfer, if I'm not mistaken, but don't quote me on that. Nathan says, never heard of Stone Cold, but it looks like my thing. It's badass, dude. Go get it. Um, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. I think you will. Um, all right. Now it's time. Where's my co-host? To get, get my, I wish he could sit on my shoulder, but he can't. He can't sit on my shoulder. Now look, um I can't sit on my shoulder. I'll just maybe I'll put him here. No, because he'll get in the way. So maybe here. I'll just go like like this? No. Ha ha. Do you like scary movies? Let's talk Scream 6. Uh, I was not a, I was not a massive fan of Scream 5. If you go back and watch my Scream 5 review, I, I, was, I was at a loss. That to, to put it mildly, I was at a loss. I was speechless. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know if I liked it or not. It made a lot of choices that I hated. Um, it made a lot of choices that I'm a big continuity canon guy. It made a lot of choices that broke continuity, that broke canon, and I didn't like that. Um, overall, I, th I walked out not liking the movie. Over the year since, you know, I've, I've watched it now five times, and I think I've grown to accept it. Accept it. That's the word. I've accepted it for what it is. And I said, with Scream 6, it'll either redeem 5, or uh, I'm just going to shit on this entire new version, iteration, whatever you want to call it, of the Scream Franchise. Now, I promise you, no spoilers. No spoilers here. I will not say anything about the killers 
or uh, or, or who dies or any of that. Uh, all I'm gonna say is uh, I, I will talk in in I will talk in uh, as simple terms as possible. I'm just gonna say Ghostface and survivors i but i'm not gonna i i i saw a couple of reviews sort of gave some things away so i i, I promise you i'm gonna tiptoe around it carefully and not say one dang thing so so uh like i promised it's gonna be kind of a unique review because i, I think a lot of you might disagree with me and that's fine because cinema works differently for everybody let's Get into it. Here is my review of the long-awaited Scream 6 from 2003. Uh, literally released yesterday. Scream 6. Here we go. This movie made me retroactively like Scream 5 more. And I was really on the fence on that one. Luckily, are you ready for this? Scream 6 is fucking phenomenal. And as a diehard Ghostface fan from day one of opening night of the original, I walked out very happy. I really appreciated that they took the time to develop the new kids on the block. And I ended up officially falling in love with the new characters, which I honestly didn't think would happen. It's a year after the events of the fifth film and the four survivors, the self-styled Core Four, are being targeted by a new ghost face that is absolutely the most brutal and intense ghost face of the entire franchise. I'd even call this ghost face a shark, and you get that impression in every attack sequence. Let me pause here from the, the, the review itself to sort of explain that bit. One of the things I really liked about this movie is that this ghost face does not give a fuck. He he doesn't care where he fucking is um, or, or, or what they're fucking doing. They are going to kill, kill, kill. Ghostface is going to kill. Now I'm using a, you know, uh, a, a male tense for Ghostface just because shoot me. I'm not, I'm not going to get into the whole pronouns. He, she, they pronoun shit. Ghostface doesn't give two fucks in this movie. He's going to kill, kill, kill. And he, to me, he feels like a shark. He goes at it like a shark. And I love that. We've never had a Ghostface that just keeps fucking coming like Jason. He's basically Jason in this movie. And yes, there is a, an, uh, an homage to Jason Takes Manhattan in this movie. And I'm so glad they did that. I'm really happy they fucking did that. Because if they didn't, it, it would have been a missed opportunity. Keep your eyes open. You'll see it. They're absolutely great uh, little Easter egg for Jason Takes Manhattan in this movie. But Ghostface is Jason charging nonstop. Whatever he's got to do, kill, kill, kill. I love that. Absolutely the most brutal Ghostface, in my opinion, and, and, and definitely the most um, terrifying. He's not tripping over shit. He's not getting knocked over by uh, you know a fridge door. He's not, he doesn't look like he's on roller skates. This ghost face is the real fucking deal. And, and and I really appreciated that. I really appreciated that we got a ghost face knew how to handle themselves. How about that? I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. And, and that, to me, really won me over. All right. Back to my official review here. The cast is better, the kills are gorier, the fan service is appreciated, and it all, for the most part, works and is very satisfying. Gale is way more integrated with the plot, and Kirby, thankfully, continues to be a fantastic character and is gold in her return here. Her presence makes me not miss Sydney as much. And if you remember, I was the one who broke sydney not coming back i was at a convention i interviewed her well off air and then i i broke it in my video she said she's not coming back created a whole hubbub people didn't believe me but she didn't come back she wasn't in this movie and i said there's no scream i said this and 100 percent, i'm gonna eat my words there's no scream without nev campbell there's no scream without sydney because she is the story Sydney's mentioned in this. She, I'll tell you this. This is a this is not a slight spoiler because this this will put a lot of people at ease. She's not killed off screen. She's not killed off screen, which is great. She's still alive, 
and she's dealt with in a very respectful way. And I think something that really actually really works with the story. The story turn that 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 the direction they take with the story here is brilliant, brilliant, because it encompasses what happened in five and all the events of the other movies, and we get a really rewarding story here. Something very different, something very unique, something that really affects these characters from the fifth movie. And I was like, "Fuck, awesome!" But if Kirby wasn't there, I think it would be a little weird. So Kirby really patches that missing, missing Sydney element. Um, you know, take that for what you will, but I, I'm overall I'm glad um, that Kirby is here. I think a lot of people will hate the ending reveal, but I accepted it as par for the course in this franchise. I think overall they made all the right choices, and I, I may not feel that way down the line, but for now, I do feel that way. Uh, there aren't any franchise uh, killer moments like in the last movie, which really bogged that one down. Uh, this one felt unpredictable and dangerous, and frankly, I was very impressed. And I think Wes would be too. I'm very happy to report I love Scream 6. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it, loved it. Five stars. Five stars for Scream 6. It's a goddamn great sequel, uh, especially coming off of Part 5. Like I said, it made me like Part 5 even better. I still think Part 5 is weak. It's right down there with 3. Uh, but this is a fucking solid sequel. Uh, it, it's, it, 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 it is essentially following Scream 2, a college campus. But... It does a lot of things differently. It, it veers the story in a very interesting way. I think where a lot of people are going to go, fuck this movie, is the finale. I think a lot of... I accepted it because if you know Scream, it's kind of par for the course. Like, all right, that's the DNA of Scream. I'm okay with it. I, I And wa watching it a second time, I was, even, I, I, I was like, okay, that's fine. I accept it even more. But I think a lot of people are going to be really upset with the way it wraps up. But I think the movie rap, you know, ramping up to that is so exciting. The Gale scene is exciting. Uh, you know, the shrine moment is exciting. Almost, uh, it's like nonstop action. Honestly, chase sequences all over the place, kills all over the place, unpredictability, blood and guts, like literal guts spilling out, beheadings. It's fantastic. It's a really violent movie, and. I found it really rewarding. In the grand scheme of the franchise, it is our Jason Lives. To quote, to, to quote another uh, Jason movie. Uh, let me uh, check in with the chat now. Again, no spoilers, everybody. Um, if anybody's uh, uh, mentioning anything, I will have to block you. Uh, Ozzy says, I just hope I don't have to look at Courtney's face anymore. Jesus. You do, and she's in the movie quite a bit, uh, and and she's great in it. The one thing I will say, not a spoiler, but I don't like what they did with Gail's character. I think that was a weak choice. We'll talk about it more on the Sunday show. I hope you join us for that. Three men and a little a movie. We're going to be talking Scream 6. Hopefully you'll join us for that Sunday night. Spoiler and non-spoiler sections in that one. Let's see. Uh, Noise says, I rewatched five Wednesday night and enjoyed it more. And it made me appreciate and care for the characters in six a lot more last night. And I fucking loved six. There you go. Yeah, I think they also they improved those characters because you didn't really get to know them in five. In six, you really get to spend time with them. You really sp it's, it, it, There's a real emotional link. Like they really feel like, like, I, uh, like I said, I fell in love with them. Like, all right, I like these guys now. I, 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 get, I, I feel like I know them more. And it was a lot more fun. I think five is really dour and depressing. Six is a lot more fun. Corruptive Chaos says the reveal and motive for Ghostface was the weakest in the franchise. I mean, I don't want to get into spoilers now, but if if you if you know the franchise, uh, it's it's like poetry. That's all I'm gonna say. It's like poetry. Blaka says I think this was the weakest movie in the franchise. I can't even defend my opinion because, gotcha. Okay, no worries, no worries. Um. Uh, well, join us, Blugga, on Sunday when we talk spoilers, and uh, we'll get into it. Um, Einar says, so I guess you're not missing the Craven touch then? No, not not really. Um, 
I mean, I feel like it's there. I, I feel like it's there. There's moving camera. There, there's a lot of stuff that feels Wes Craveny. Um, I am missing the Kevin Williamson dialogue. I think that's another maybe sticking point with the movie. The dialogue isn't great. Some of the lines are kind of uh, uh, a little too on the nose, a little too expository. And there's not a, that quippy, quotable Williamson stuff is missing. I, I do... I do miss that. I do miss that quite a bit. Um, but I think Wes's handprints are sort of on it. It, it's, it's, it still feels very Wessy. That's a term I just made up. Joe Jack says, I guess I need to marathon the series. Absolutely. Go do it. Like I said, look, don't go into this movie without seeing the other movies. Don't go into it without seeing the other movies because it spoils the entire franchise. So don't do that. Chaos says, 4 is my favorite. So I'm glad Kirby was back. 4 was the original Legacy sequel. I'm with you. Four is my favorite sequel. It still is my favorite sequel. My ranking right now, uh, obviously one. Four, I think, is still a powerful movie. I think the motive in that is fantastic. I love everybody in that movie. That was a movie that really allowed me to care for the characters. I didn't spend much time with them. But yeah, Kirby was great. Four, six, surprisingly. Uh, then I would, and, and two is a movie that I, I liked, but I just never really got into Scream 2. There's something about it. I just could never get into two. I, I, you know, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I didn't like the college setting. I liked it better here in six. Two would be next, uh, then three, and then five. Uh, I, I would put five at the bottom only because three is an official Scream sequel with Sydney, um, even though three's rough. But five always feels like, hey, what about? Uh, five will be in the bottom, uh, I think, for me in terms of my rating. Like I says, uh, I say I feel like there was way too many things that don't make sense or the writers forgot about that makes the movie seem chopped up more than. Um, all right, yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk on Sunday. I think I know what you're talking about. Sometimes you, uh, you know, it's like maybe I talked myself into liking it, but there, there are, there are issues, but not as many as there are in 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 five that really bugged me. Uh, Nathan says, "Do we get to a little Jenna TNA?" What do you think? What do you think, Nathan? Have you ever seen a Scream movie before? What do you think? I'll let you answer that question. Um, all right. those are That's my review of Scream 6. Five stars, man. I loved it. I think it's a really good sequel. I'm actually watching it again tonight for the third time uh, with the family. And they, 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 they asked me to not say anything, so I haven't told them my thoughts at all. Uh, so uh, they're going to go in blind and I, I'm very curious to see what they think. And I'll tell you on Sunday, uh, what they think. My family, we're all big scream fans here. My kids love it. They've seen, they've seen the franchise multiple times. They've seen the first one over 10 times. Um, uh, we're big fans of the franchise. We've met the cast. We're invested. We are invested. I have a ton of this guy all over my house. We're invested in the franchise. Uh, honestly, I, I think, you know what? Hey, I'll put him up here. Why did I think of that sooner? Do you see him? Well, now it's too late, but he'll be up there for next time. Um, we're invested in the franchise. And I think it's in good hands. And if, like we talked about on the last uh, Coffee with Chaos, if 7 is greenlit, great. Bring it on. Bring it on. Oh, another thing. Not a spoiler, but just so you know, there is an end credit sequence for the movie. So stay through the credits. There is an end credit sequence. It's beautiful. You can't miss it. It's so great. So, so great. Um, uh, Chaos says, excited to hear more of your thoughts on Sunday. Yes, we'll get we'll get more into more more in depth and then we'll hear what BC and TC think. My prediction is BC will hate it, TC will like it, but we'll see. We'll see. Sunday we will see if we can make my dislike for Scream 6 make sense. Uh, absolutely, bring it. Uh, I I, I want to hear it, and I'm not saying you're wrong at all, obviously. But I'm curious. I, I'm curious, and I think I know what it is. But I, yeah, we're not gonna talk. We're not gonna talk. We're not gonna talk about it here. Not gonna talk. I mean, there are there's a lot. There's one big logic thing. Like, how the fuck is that possible? But uh, we'll, 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 we'll we'll walk around it. So I'm hearing there's a shout factory sale, but I. Don't see anything on my end. How are you guys? How'd you guys find out about it on Twitter? 
I don't see anything on my end. Let me see if I can track that down real quick before we call it a day. Uh, 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 uh. Let me see. Oh, okay. Uh, I see it. Let's see if we can take a look at this real quick. All right. Last minute edition. Another physical media adventure here. There is a sale going on. This is a shout select. Uh, shout select always seems to be going on sale. March uh, 20, uh, 2023 Ticket to Savings Sale. The Herzog Collection. That's Well, I guess it's a discount. I wouldn't call that a sale. It's really more of a discount. But, hey, fine. Four bucks is four bucks. Matinee. Oh, I love matinee. Highly recommend that. These are all without slips, by the way, from what I'm seeing here. Red Dawn Collector's Edition. Not much of a sale. To be fair, Princess Caribou, Phoebe Cates' last movie. Um, oh, Paradise Alley. I didn't realize they put that out. That's cool. That's one of... Uh, Paradise Alley is one of uh, Tarantino's favorite movies, according to his book. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 Shakedown. Shakedown fun. I like Shakedown. I reviewed that on my letterbox a while back. Uh, Glenn Miller's story is great. I got that. Uh, $20 for the Deer Hunter 4K. Has anyone bought that? Did that look good? I I, I think BC bought it. He said it, he didn't really didn't really see a difference. To uh, fire uh, 4K. Is that out? I thought that wasn't out yet. I guess it is. So these are these have all been out for a while. Most people have all these, but if you don't, well, actually, they put something cheaper down here. 41 bucks. I still I had the set. Still have not cracked into it. I have to crack into that. Love me some cheebs. Uh, cuffs. The classic Cuffs. Mm, Havoc. Oh, man. Can I tell you about this movie real quick? Get your grubby little mitts on Havoc. Can I tell you why? I will. Havoc has uh, the lovely and talented Anne Hathaway's uh, ba -ba -ba boobs. That's right. It's the first movie she's naked in. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a kind of a you know, fucking gang banger kind of movie. Not a gang bang movie, but a gang banger kind of like, you know, kind of like kids type of movie. But yep, uh, but she gets uh, feisty, feisty naked in this one. And uh, it's quite good, quite good. Um, honestly, mainly because of that. But put that on your radar in case you are a fan of anatomy. Uh, okay, Dragnet, highly recommend Dragnet. So good. Dr. Detroit, I love this movie. I don't think it aged well for me. Honestly. Uh, Bill and Ted's. If you don't have it. But it looks like it's only... It's only it's only excellent adventure. Uh, 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 uh. Alright. Coo. Coo, coo, coo. The Ebony Costello box set is 101. So really more of a, a discount. In my mind, it doesn't feel like a super sale. It's a discount. It's a, it's a discount. Joe Jack giving a recommend for Glenn Gary and Glenn Ross. Good movie, but uh, just know what you're getting into. It, it's, uh, it's basically people talking in a room. It's a good movie, good acting movie. But, I, you know, I remember renting that and being like, what the hell's happening? What is this? I've, I've grown to like it, but my impression was like, this is weird. Uh, yeah, Justin, I agree. Dragnet does rule. Blugger says, if you had more budget for your Headless Horse movie, where would you have located it to improve on after you watched it? I enjoyed it, by the way. I don't know if I ever said that. Thank you, Blugger. I appreciate that. If we had more budget and time, I was going to shoot on the bridge that they filmed Lost Boys on. It was this big, massive bridge. We went out, to, and it's, you know, it was it was in Santa Clarita, so it was near our area. It's like right off of, like, uh, Six Flags, Magic Mountain. We were going to shoot on the Lost Boys bridge. Big, epic fucking bridge. It was too expensive. Here's the thing. When you're shooting a movie, you got to think about everything. Electricity, bathrooms, all the stuff that you need to power shit, to make sure people don't shit on the ground. Ha costs money and has to be trucked in. This was a public park. Uh, no light, no power. So we had to bring in a generator. 
and we had to run a ton of cable because generators are loud. So you have to park it far away. It's a hassle. Then bathrooms. You have to bring in ha uh, bring in bathrooms so people can go to the bathroom. And you need a site monitor. And sometimes, uh, even for the days we shot on the street, we had we had to have a, 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 a LAPD officer with us for two nights shoot while we shot on the street. Even though we had a permit, we had to have a cop with us according to the rules. He, this motherfucker made a hundred and eighty dollars an hour. A hundred and eight. He was the highest paid person on the movie. Hundred and eighty dollars an hour. All he had to do sit in his fucking squad car and 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 pl and play games on his phone, watch Netflix. Hundred eighty dollars an hour. My God. We yeah. It's expensive to make a movie. Uh, I, I would have gone for bigger and better and, and more action. I would have added more action. The original script had more action. Um, yeah. Um, Brent says, shop titles cheaper on Amazon. Some titles have extra savings coupon to once in cart. Hey, there you go, Brent. Thanks for putting that on our radar. There you go, guys. Shop titles are cheaper on Amazon. And you're, you're not going to get a sip with these guys. So you might as well save some dough. Ryan says, have seen Havoc on TV. Some great TNA. I need to bite the bullet. Bite it. Bite it hard. Like I said, sounds exactly like what happened on the set of Supernatural when I was there. Oh, were you on the set of Supernatural? Oh, nice, man. That's cool. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, the, the one movie I'm, I'm working on now, which I, I can't talk about yet, but I will soon. I'm going to be shooting in June. As another case of, I don't even know if we can afford it because we have to have a guy monitoring us. It's tough. It's tough to make a movie, but it is what it is. Anywho, uh, I digress. Ticket to savings happening, uh, I guess, to, I guess to the end of March. It doesn't have, really, have any details here. I did find it on Twitter's. Save 40% off of cult classics and award-winning dramas. Um, and a whole bunch of crazy crab. All right. Shouts to like sale. Do it to it. Uh, if you haven't yet, then, then, then by all means do it to it justin says 20 bucks for the jerk not bad the jerk is a fucking amazing movie do me a slam the thumbs up if you haven't yet join the first hundred club or join the next hundred club this helps the video so much if you haven't subscribed yet but you've been enjoying this content help me out and and subscribe because it means a lot to the content and it means a lot to the video and by what i mean by content is uh if i see that is attracting attention, that people are down to clown, that people are enjoying it, all that good stuff, then I'm going to be, you know, up for doing more and more and more. And, and uh, it's hard to keep doing these things into a vacuum. But thank you so much. If you're here watching live, you are amazing. You are important. You've made my day. If you're watching on a replay, you've also made my day. Continue by leaving me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. That's so crucial. Engagement. So crucial here on YouTube, especially for a small channel like me who's trying to grow, trying to deliver bigger and better content. Um, engagement is key. In the last video got no comments. So drop a comment down below. Say, hey, I really enjoyed it. Good job. Hey, uh, by the way, no spoilers. Hey, I saw Scream 6. I thought it was okay or whatever. Give me non-spoiler comments, please. Uh, I I'll take them. Um, but any spoiler things will be cut. But let me know that you're out there. If you're watching on a replay, it, it's important. I want to connect with you. This is this is not just a YouTube video. This is a community. I'm trying to you know engender a real community, real family atmosphere here. You guys are as important to the show as I am. Yeah, I talk and I bring you the news and things like that. But without you there listening, without you there being a part of it, there wouldn't be a show. And I want there to be a show. And I want there to be a next time with you. I'll see you on Three Men and a little movie on Sunday. I love you, my friend. Happy Friday. Have a cup of coffee on me. Talk soon.